Shalom. First and foremost, as always, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rachak, Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, pushing this truth. And peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Yeah, gonna get into this virgin birth thing, because apparently this is coming back up to, you know, people still believe in the virgin birth, even at this time. And, you know, as the scriptures say, we are to defend the gospel. So we're going to get into this whole virgin birth and prove to the scriptures that there is no such thing as the virgin birth or immaculate conception. <clears throat> so we're going to start off in uh, Romans, the first chapter and the third verse. And apologies if you hear the fan in the background. I apologize. It's just really hot in my room. But this is Romans chapter one and three. It says concerning his son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So let's go into that word seed, right? Let's deal with that first and foremost, because people think that or believe that Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit or an angel, that an angel impregnated Mary or that the Lord put a baby, just threw a baby in Mary's womb. And that's how uh, Yahweh Shai came forth and Joseph had nothing to do with it. So now when you go to our word seed, right, it's the word sperma, which is what? The sperm. It goes back to the Greek word sperm. I'll even thing it for you. Strong's G 4690, sperma, sperma. Which is the sperm, which is what, when a man and woman have sex, what? When the man, uh, apologies for if I use strong language here, but when the man ejaculates into a woman, what does he ejaculate into? Sperm. So Yahweh Shah was made of the sperm of David according to the flesh. And when you go into that, one of the definitions right there, it says semen virile, which is your sperm. So Yahweh Shah was, came just like every other man. He didn't come in no virgin birth way where people think it was an angel or, or uh, the Lord just threw a baby in Mary's womb. So now let's go to Matthew, the first chapter, right? This is giving you the genealogy of Yahusha, going all the starting all the way from, uh, says the book of generation of Yahusha, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and goes through it from beginning from Abraham all the way down to uh, where we're at right now. Now this is Matthew chapter one and eighteen. It says, now the birth of Yahweh Shah was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Now, let's stop right there. It says a spouse. Now, let's get the definition for the word a spouse. Oh, just give me a second, because the phone acts slow. Now... It said she was espoused with the ED at the end, right? Which means past tense. Now look at the second, second definition, sorry. It says Mary. So that means Mary, the mother of Yahweh was married to Joseph. Now what is marriage according to the scriptures? Now I'll read this in the Zonderfans Bible, uh, Compact Bible Dictionary. It says marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and woman consent consummated and continually continuously nourished by sexual intercourse so sex is marriage according to scriptures biblically sex is marriage not like how it is today where you put a ring on a woman's uh finger and you asking her to marry you no that's off according to the scriptures sex is marriage matter of fact let's just get some uh um precepts to back that up let's go to our forefathers for example let me just find it real quick. Give me one moment. Just give me one moment, Baba Kasha. So this is Genesis, the 24th chapter, right? Right. And 67. So this is when the servant of uh, Abraham went and got Rebekah uh, and found Isaac a wife, right? So I'm just going to hit the point. This is Genesis chapter 27 and 24. It says, and Isaac, 
uh, brought unto her, uh, and Isaac brought her into his mother's mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death, right? So there wasn't no putting a ring on her finger or anything like that. This isn't Beyonce, if you like it, put a ring on it. Nah. What he did is he took into his mother's uh, his mother's tent, he took Rebecca into his mother's tent, and he had sex with her, and that's how she became his wife. So going back to Matthew. Slokia. When it says, now the birth of Yahushua was on this wise, when his mother Mary was espoused, meaning she was already married to Joseph, meaning they already had sex, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. So now let's deal with that before they came together. Because a lot of people will sit there and think that, oh, that must mean before they had sex. No, that's not what that means. Because you had a way that you would do things back in Israel or in the ancient world. So let me find it in the scriptures real quick. But it's back in Genesis. I want to see. Where is that? I'm looking for it real quick. I found it. It's the 29th chapter. And it's starting at the 21st verse. Right. And I have like a kind of special Bible here that has like little subtitles. So this is Genesis 29 and 21. But I'm going to just read here from my Bible where it says right here, the, the book I'm using. It says uh, it has a little subtitle. So it says marriage to Leah and Rachel. And how was marriage to Leah and Rachel? Right. Again, it says uh, Genesis chapter 29, 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife. For my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. So you see, that's how people and uh, that's how people get married is through the act of sex. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it, and it came to pass in the evening. Oh, OK, so that was that was uh, that's the point I want to get right there. Uh, verse 22. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. So that was the before coming together. You see, back in ancient Israel, what would you have to do? You'd have to give the dowry, the, uh, I believe it's the 50 uh, shekels of dowry to the father, and you'd have to have the, uh, the bloody sheet as a token that uh, proving her virginity. But what probably happened, you know, just, uh, just using your imagination, Joseph and Mary didn't do things the normal way uh, how you would do it. In, um, they didn't do things the normal way. So what probably happened is Joseph probably took Mary and started popping her, not against the father or whatever, but they didn't. They probably didn't have the feast where everybody would know that Mary was um, uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Yahushua, was Joseph uh, was Joseph's wife. Because the reason why you would do things like that, have a feast and all that, is so that everybody would know whose wife, uh, whose wife that is, who uh, who she belongs to. So that way, if a man comes, you know, comes in Israel and he doesn't know, he may see Mary or see this woman, he's not going up on her like, oh, hey, let me talk to you, baby, because what? You wouldn't have a ring to show that she's married. So how would you know that this woman is uh, married to this man? So if this, you see another man approaching this woman, you'd be like, yo, yo, she belongs to somebody else. You can't touch her or anything, man. She belongs to somebody else. So that's why people in the, uh, in the town would know. So there'd be like a feast and, you know, everybody and the elders would know like, yo, this man and woman, uh, uh, he paid the 50 shekels of, uh, of silver. That's in, I believe, in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, if I'm not mistaken. And you'd also give the bloody sheet to show that she was a virgin. I believe the, uh, the midwives would take the bloody sheet to prove that the daughter was a virgin these would be the tokens of virginity so these were the uh this uh this is the way things was done in ancient israel you got to put your mind back in that way uh, in that world not how it is today so that's how uh um people knew that uh this woman was your wife but joseph and mary probably didn't do things that way now he probably you know probably did pay the 50 shekels of silver but they probably however it went down didn't show the uh didn't have proof of the um of the uh the bloody sheet and things like that and probably didn't have a feast and all that so that's why when you go back to matthew right it says in verse 19 it says then joseph her husband 
And how was he her husband? Through the act of sex, through the act of marriage, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. Right. How would she have been made a public example? Because Joseph didn't do things the normal way, which is however it went down, whether he probably paid the father the dowry and uh, maybe they just didn't have the feast and everybody just didn't know in the town that, oh, you know, Joseph and Mary are married. You know, they had sex and things like that. They probably didn't do it that way. They just probably just started fucking or whatever, you know, got into it. Apologies for the strong language, but so that's why he was uh, going all nervous with the situation, not willing to make her a public example. How has she been made a public example? Because you didn't have things how it is today where, you know, women are OK with being single mothers and things like that. And she's just sleeping around with a whole bunch of men. If men in ancient Israel during that time had seen Mary with the stomach and didn't know who the father was, they would have probably stoned her to death and saying, like, yo, what the hell? Like, who's the father? And she can't sit there and come and say, oh, well, you know, an angel went into me. No, she would have looked like she was a mad woman. So what happened was uh, that's why Joseph was going around the situation nervously because they didn't make known that, yo, the traditional way with the, the paying of the dowry, with the bloody sheet, taking the bloody sheet to the elders or the however went down, the midwives or the uh, would give the bloody sheet to the father and then the father would give the uh, bloody sheet to the uh, elders of Israel and show that, yo, my daughter was a virgin and this man is now the husband of my daughter and things like that. That probably is not how it went down. They probably just got together and started fucking. And just to uh, bring another point, it says uh, when you go into the NIV of uh, Matthew 1 and 19, right? You get the NI, uh, NIV for Matthew 1 and 19. It says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. What was the law? When he paid the, uh, you pay the dowry and things like that. And says, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace because if people find out or probably thought that Mary was going around sleeping around, she would have been stoned to death. And he had a mind to divorce her quietly. And how, if, if, think about it like this way: if sex is marriage, right? Why would he want? Why would he have wanted to put her away privately? Why would he have wanted to divorce her? If she wasn't his wife, if he never went in unto her, he could have just let her go and be like, "Yo, you got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You got pregnant by some." some magic ent entity okay well i didn't go into you anyway so i don't i'm not really technically married to you you're just betrothed to me but I, apparently the holy spirit went up in you so uh i could just put you away from me but no it says he was faithful to the law that's why he didn't want to put her away because he had sex with mary he went into he put his semen into her, he ejaculated into her, and that's why he was faithful to the law that he had to take care of her So continuing on, it says, Now the birth of Yahweh Shah was on this wise when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, a spouse, past tense, meaning she was already married, they already had sex, uh, to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm a little jumping around a little bit here and there, but now let's deal with that whole she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Because John, I believe that's in Luke, right? John, uh, Yahushua's cousin, was also born of the Holy Spirit. So does that mean that his mother also had a virgin birth? Let's check into it. Now I'm going to jump around here, but this is Luke 1 and 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughters of Aaron, excuse me, and her name was Elizabeth. Apologies, excuse me. And they were both righteous before the Most High, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Okay, let me, let me go through it real quick. I'm going to start, I'll, I'll jump around a little bit. Verse 13, Luke 1 and 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. But John was also, it says John was also born of the Holy Spirit. 
But does that mean that John had a, a virgin birth as well? Did the Holy Spirit just come into uh, uh, John's mother, Elizabeth, and just give her uh, a baby? No. The Holy Spirit just means anointed. He was anointed to do the will of the Lord. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, the Lord just put a baby or an angel, like some people believe, impregnated uh, uh, Mary. Because John the Baptist was also born of the Holy Spirit, but he had a normal birth. So Yahweh Shah also had a normal birth. This is why you have to get into these words. A spouse. Mary was a spouse to Joseph, meaning she was married. I got the definition early of what marriage means in ancient times. Meaning that what? Through the act of sex. And I brought up the uh, examples with I, um, Isaac and with Jacob, with Laban and Rachel. That is what uh, consummates sex. Not a ring on your finger. And the uh, Holy Spirit or an angel did not impregnate Mary. Joseph is the biological father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. This is not no fairy tales, man. The Lord had a normal birth just like everybody. You just got to get into these words and get into the definition and find out the Greek and the Hebrew to understand things. And you got to understand the customs and the laws so that way it paints a clearer picture for you. And you can see, and with the Holy Spirit working with you, so you can see that, look, the Lord had a normal birth. He was just anointed by the Lord to do his will. And he was a normal man just like everybody else. The scriptures even tell you that he was born in sinful flesh. He was just... He was a, he was born a normal birth, but he just wasn't a normal man, meaning that he had a normal birth just like everybody else. He came into the world normal just like everybody else, but he was an extraordinary individual because he was the, the only begotten son of Yahweh. He was the first spirit created from the Heavenly Father, or the only spirit, excuse me, the only spirit created from the Heavenly Father. So he had a normal birth just like everybody else, but he was an extraordinary individual, and he had a mission to do. That's all. It's plain and simple. The scriptures speak about the simplicity of Yahweh Shai, man. This, 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 this truth is not supposed to be something hard and, and just a whole bunch of confusion, man. The scriptures say that the Heavenly Father is not the author of confusion. And this whole virgin birth thing is bringing confusion and still bring confusion even to this day. So I'll read that again. Luke 1 and 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. So the father, Zacharias, impregnated Elizabeth with his, with his semen, the, as we uh, found out the word for uh, the Greek for, uh, for sperm, which is sperma. He ejaculated into his wife, um, Elizabeth, and John was brought forth. And that Holy Spirit that was on him was the anointing of the Heavenly Father to do the Heavenly Father's will. And Yahweh Shai had came in that same spirit, but he just had a greater uh, spirit on him. The greatest, uh, he had a greater portion that the Heavenly Father gave him, uh, on him more than anybody else because he had to, you know, pretty much die for the nation of Israel. So the Heavenly Father put a heavier spirit, a heavier portion upon Yahweh Shai. That's all it means. It's very simple. Don't confuse it. Don't listen to these people out here. These confused people that don't have the Holy Spirit, that don't have the understanding on them, man. They're going to confuse you and they're going to bug you out. That's why people think that an angel went up and married. If an angel went up and married, that means that the angel would be the father of Yahweh Shai. But that would be what? That would be adultery because what? Mary was with Joseph. And that's what? Confusion. Because here it is. You have now two people, two men, because angels are men, claiming or, or having, uh, what's the word I could use? I guess you could use, where I could use the word claim. Two men basically claiming Mary as their wife because people believe that an angel impregnated Mary. But when you go up in your woman, she is now your wife. Now, if she's a virgin, you know, we have to go put our minds back in how things were in the ancient world. Things were different back then. So if we go to that, that would be adultery. If the angel went up and married, that would be adultery, man. And that heavenly father doesn't like adultery. That's going off. That's against his laws. That's against the scriptures. And the heavenly father speaks about adultery many times in the scriptures. So why would the heavenly, so you mean to tell me that the heavenly father sent an angel to go impregnate Mary to go commit pretty much the heavenly father sent an angel to go commit adultery with Mary? Come on, man. That's, see, people don't know the scriptures. But let's go back to Matthew. So now let's recap. There's a couple more precepts I'm going to get. So now let's recap, right? It says, now the birth of Yahweh Shai was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, meaning she, that she was married to Joseph already. All right. If I have to say it in these terms for you to understand, apologize for my language, but there was already fucking 
long time and what fucking is the uh, is marriage to Joseph before they came together they didn't do things however it went down the traditional way whether that he didn't give the dowry the bloody sheet or whatever or the elders of Israel didn't know that Mary and Joseph was together however it went down uh, they just probably just started fucking because they loved each other so much uh, she was found with Holy Spirit of the child that just means he was anointed to do the will of the Lord that's it verse 19 then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example why because people in Israel didn't know that they were together probably at the time and if they had found out they would have wanted to stone Mary and if if Mary was stoned that would have killed Yahusha as well and that would have ended the whole plan of the Heavenly Father Yahweh so that's why he was going about it nervously because nobody in Israel probably didn't know that they were together that that was his wife that he was the one fucking her right and when we and I got the example of the NIV that Joseph was faithful to the law now verse 20 but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy spirit so the angel said fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife she was his wife not no angels not no the holy spirit then and company and mary and and pregnant her. no Joseph was the one fucking Mary. All right. And matter of fact, I'll get another uh, thing to prove that. It says right here in the last verse, and we'll get into the law and things like that as well. It says, uh, this is Matthew chapter 1 and 25. And uh, and knew her not until she had brought forth, brought forth her firstborn son, Yahweh. Uh, Slack, let me read that again. Matthew 1 and 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Yahweh right so Yahweh was the firstborn of, of Mary and Joseph and he had other brothers and sisters now let's go into that word new because like I said you gotta go into his definition of his words right now let's hear what this word is Strong's G 1097 Gnosko Gnosko right Gnosko now look at this definition it says a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. So when it says that Joseph knew her not till she had brought forth his son, meaning that he was not fucking her, because even in this day, believe it or not, and I'm pretty sure some brothers know this, when you uh, when you was in the world, some people would tell your friends they would be fucking that woman even though she's pregnant. Yeah, it's, dudes do that in the world, believe it or not. I, I know guys that have done that. Even though that woman's pregnant, they'll still try to be like, oh, baby, I, I just, you, they'll be like, yo, bro, I had to get it off, man. Like, I just had to, like, I couldn't contain myself. So even though his woman is pregnant, there's some dudes out there that'll still fuck the woman, even though she's pregnant. And women will be down with it, too. All right? So Joseph did not fuck Mary until she brought forth Yahweh, which knew meaning what? He already had known her because he was already fucking her before. That's how... Uh, Yahweh was born because when he was fucking her from times past, he impregnated her with his sperma and he didn't fuck her again until she brought forth Yahweh. Then they started fucking again and then that's when they brought forth the, his Yahweh brothers and his sisters. So you see, Yahweh had a normal birth just like everybody else. The Holy Spirit just means he was anointed to do the will of the Heavenly Father. That's all. It doesn't mean that the Lord put up a, a Put it, just threw a baby in Mary's stomach. Yes, now we know that the Lord could do anything, but the Lord just had it to where he had a normal birth. That was all. Because Yahweh had to conquer the flesh, and he did conquer the flesh. Now, if he was made like the angels, and let me get that real quick, in Corinthians, I believe that's Corinthians 15, because the angels don't have the same glory as we have in this flesh. Right? So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 38. But the Most High giveth, giveth, giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, and another of fishes, and of beasts. I'm sorry. And other, and, sorry, let me read that again. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, 
another flesh of beasts, other of fishes, and, of, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, which celestials are those heavenly bodies, and bodies terrestrial, which is your, your earthly body. That's where you get the word terraform, meaning the ground. There was even a, a, if you watch that show Teen Titans, there was that character, her name was Terra, and she would control the ground. So the terrestrial body is the earthly body, the body that you're in now. And then when you go up to the heavens, you have your spiritual body up there that's waiting for you. That's the celestial body. The, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Right? So, uh, matter of fact, hold on. Let me find this precept just to expound upon that as well. Give me one second. But uh, just continuing on uh, while I'm looking for this one precept. Right, Yahweh came in sinful flesh. He didn't come in, in like an angelic body, because then how would he, uh, how would he have been able to conquer the flesh? Because Yahweh was also tempted, just like we was tempted, and Satan came to him and tried to tempt him as well. But if Yahweh had an angelic body, Satan wouldn't have been able to tempt him. He would have never had uh, temptations to go off. But he had temptations to go off because he was made in sinful flesh, which is what through the act of sex. Right, that's what I was looking for. This is Romans chapter eight. Oh, slack! So like I went to three. This is Romans chapter eight, verse three. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the Most High sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why? Why? Because he was able to conquer the flesh. He kept the law perfectly. He did no sin in sinful flesh. He was in flesh just like how we have flesh. We're in this flesh and we go off time to time, even though we try to the best of our abilities to, you know, keep the law to the best of our abilities. But we go off from time to time. Satan is able to in infect our minds, make us, you know, have doubts, uh, you know, have wicked thoughts and things like that. But Yahweh Shah was in the same flesh how we're in right now. But yet he didn't have none of that. He didn't do none of that. The same way we're tempted to go off and do things wicked, Yahweh Shai was in the same flesh how we are, are with right now. He felt the same things we are, but he didn't go off. He stayed obedient to the Father, even until death. So Yahweh Shai came in the same way that we're born. He had a natural birth, just like everybody else. Again, just reiterating the point that he just was a special individual, and the Heavenly Father gave him the Spirit, a heavier portion of the Spirit, to do his will. But just like us, we're also anointed of the Heavenly Father to do the Heavenly Father's will. But we just don't have that heavy, heavy portion of the spirit yeah, like Yahweh did. But we're coming in the same spirit of Yahweh to do the will of the Father. We're also anointed just like Yahweh was anointed. Just not, just not that heavy spirit that he was given. But we are also coming in the same way as Yahweh It's just Yahweh was perfect. He did it correct. He conquered the flesh. That's all. But now let's get into things like the law, right? So now, let me get, um, I believe the point was uh, made, but still just want to get into the law. Just get a couple more precepts just to solidify the point. And then that'll be the end of the video. Pray that this video is edifying, but let's get into the law, right? So let's go to Luke. I was in Luke. I believe it's Luke 2, 21. Right, so now this is after Yahweh was born, right? This is Luke 2 and 21. It says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, right? Because on the eighth day the child is supposed to be circumcised. His name was called Yahweh, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now it says what? Let's read that again, right? It says, and when the eight and when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, right? So Yahweh Shah fulfilled the law, the law of circumcision, because on the eighth day, that's what the uh uh on the eighth days when the child is supposed to be circumcised, and that goes back to the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham. I believe that's Genesis the seventeenth chapter. That you said that every man child that was born of you or in your house, he has to be uh, circumcised. So Yahweh shall fulfill the law of circumcision because that's what you're supposed to do. Now, if he was born of the Holy Spirit or some other way, he would have not had to have, um, have had to have fulfilled that law. But it says, um, 
and says, and when the days for purification, which is talking about Mary, according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So now let's look into that law of uh, purification that Mary had to do. Okay, yeah. This is Leviticus chapter 12 and 1. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the sons of Israel, because really that word there, children, is really supposed to be uh, bun or banyam, which is sons. Speak unto the sons of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, right, and born a man child, then shall she be unclean seven days according to the days of uh, according to the days of the separation for her of uh, for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. Right, so now let's let's look up that word conceive as well. Just want to make sure this is calm. Conceive to become pregnant with child. That's it. So Mary conceived uh conceived became pregnant with a child how does a woman become pregnant by receiving the sperm all right the man ejaculating into her she receiving that sperm and she becomes pregnant see again more proof that Yahweh had a normal birth so again i'll read that again leviticus 12 and 1 and the lord spake unto moses saying speak unto the sons of israel saying if a woman have conceived see become pregnant her and her husband was fucking and he Bust up in her, ejaculate in her, right? She conceived seed, became pregnant, and born a man child. Then shall she be unclean seven days according to the days of separation for infirmity. She shall be unclean. So Mary uh, did the law of purification, which was, uh, which was um, I believe it's 40 days she shall be unclean for, uh, for a son. And if it's a, uh, if it's a daughter, it's 80 days for a daughter if she, um, she shall be unclean for so Mary fulfilled that because Mary and Joseph are also Israelites. Let's not forget that as well. This wasn't just any old random people. Like they'll sometimes put in the movies or people will tell you, you no, know, Mary and Joseph were Israelites. Joseph was, was, uh, was a Judite. He came from the line, same line as David. When you read Matthew, the first chapter, it goes and gives you the lineage of that. So Mary uh, fulfilled the law of purification. She... Uh, because she was unclean, but why? Because she receives, uh, she received, uh, she conceived seed. She got pregnant by Joseph going into her and uh, ejaculating into her. Uh, Slock it. Give me one second. All right, Slock it. I just had to look at something real quick. All right. S no, Slock it for that. So let's go to Galatians 4 and 4. Right? So this is Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. What is the law? Mary had to, when we read in uh, Luke, the second chapter, Mary had to fulfill the law of purification. Yahweh had to be circumcised on the eighth day, which is going back to the covenant that the Lord made with Moses and going back to what we just read in Leviticus, where Mary had, had, was unclean for 40 days because she had a, a boy child. Because she conceived seed, she received seed from Joseph when he ejaculated into her. And we went in earlier when we read in Matthew, the first chapter, the 25th verse, that Joseph knew her not until she had uh, brought forth Yahushai, when Yahushai came out of her womb. Meaning, what did it mean to know? It said a Jewish idiom, meaning sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. So Joseph didn't fuck Mary, okay, until he uh, until she brought forth Yahushai. Then after a couple of months, after, when she, you know, then they started getting busy again, and then Yahushai's brothers and sisters came forth. So the proof is all there in the scriptures. You just got to go into the definition of words, knowing the Hebrew and the Greek, that Joseph and Mary was fucking. And that's how Yahushua came to be, through the act of sex with Joseph and Mary, Joseph being his bi biological father. So I'll read that again, Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of time was come, the Most High sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So Joseph and Mary had sex. And I'll get like two more precepts just to end this. And Lord's willing, this was an edifying video. So 
So I'm gonna get Wisdom of Solomon. All right, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven and one, starting from top. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Now, mind you, this is also spiritual, because technically, and spiritually speaking, this is Yahushai speaking, because we know Yahushai was also King Solomon. So this is really Yahushai speaking. So Yahushai is telling you himself, I also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made, first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months. And how does that happen? Through the act of sex. When you when the man goes up in the woman and ejaculates and busts up in here. Apologies for sounding strong language, but I'm just letting you know you got to be real here. Let off and marry. And over time that uh, I forgot about how uh, the act of the child forming in the mother's womb and all that. But after nine months, Yahweh Shah's body and everything, and then the spirit came into the body, started formulating in Mary's womb, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, which is, what is the seed of man? The sperma, Joseph's sperm, went up in Mary, started formulating in Mary's womb. Uh, the spirit came into that, uh, into that, uh, into the baby's body. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to read that again. And in in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Hold on, let me make sure this is still recording. Okay, come on. Of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice, voice which I uttered was crying as all... Sorry. And the first vo voice which I uttered was crying as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes, swaddling clothes, and that what cares. For there is no king, which Yahushua is a king, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life and the light going out. So Yahushua had one entrance into light, which is what? Through the act of sex. Joseph going up into Mary, releasing his seed into Mary, Mary coming pregnant nine months later, and then Yahweh Shah was born. All men have the same entrance into life. It said all, there is no king, and we're a nation of kings and priests, right? No king has any other beginning of birth. So the Holy Spirit didn't just go up in Mary and just make her pregnant. The Lord didn't send an angel to commit adultery on Mary, no. Mary and Joseph had sex. Yeah, uh, Joseph, which Joseph in the Hebrew is Yahweh Sap, meaning he will add, Yahweh Sap impregnated Mary and Yahweh Shah was born. I'll just get one last precept and that'll be the end of the video. And I pray this again, pray that this video is edifying and that you've been edified through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So this is Titus 1 and 14. It says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from truth. So you can't give into these stories that Mary was impregnated by the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, or that uh, um, an angel went up and married. No, that's all bullshit. That's all lies. It's all fables and things of that nature. Lord's one, this video is edifying, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rachak Kudash, Shalom.